Lucas, I really enjoyed our conversation for the podcast. And then I realized even though pretty much everyone I work with at Coverant in Berkeley uses weights and biases, since I'm not a developer myself, I actually don't. And I only get to see it from afar as it makes it into their updates and presentations to me. So I'm really excited and thankful that you offered to get back on and give me a first-hand tour. Well, yeah, there's nothing I would love more than to to give you a demo of our product. Um, and, you know, the, the product's wide-ranging, so I don't want to, you know, touch on everything it does, but kind of give you a couple of the highlights. Um, maybe I'll start by sharing my screen here. Can you see my my collab? Yep. And this this is our our intro collab that you know anyone can can go to and and play with. And what we're showing here is how to get started logging experiments to weights and biases, which is typically kind of the first thing that people use us for. So you install our Python package here um, and import it, and then ideally log in. You don't have to, but this way it'll keep track of what you're doing, and then. Here we have uh, wb.init, um, where you you name your project and name your experiment if you want to, and set some of the hyperparameters. And then here, run your experiment. And then we have um, uh, wb.log, um, where we're logging the accuracy of loss. Um, and that's all there is to it. If you put those um, into your regular training code and, and run this collab, um, you'll get this uh, dashboard here. And this dashboard um, will show here the loss that that you logged, and it'll show it across all the different runs that you had, right? So on the left side here, we have um, a big table that we can expand. And this table is showing anything we'd pull. It shows the GPU type. It shows um, some notes, um, maybe some statistics on how the, the run went. And, um, and then we can overlay these graphs, which you can go in and... Um, Customize so you know here it looks like the double five k train um, is the longest and maybe best run in the orange. So if I highlight that, you can see on the left here, um, you know it's highlighting that. I could actually click on it um, and go in and and learn more about exactly um, you know what this run is doing and 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 how it went. So you know we work with um, I mean lots of your students and um, and and companies you're associated with. So it's a really flexible system where you can log all kinds of different stuff. Um, I usually show off this um, this run that I did actually a few years ago around the time that I, I started the company uh, where I was actually doing K-MNIST um, training. And I have 512 runs here. And um, so here I have a big table. You could go in and and sort the table by hyperparameters. You can also sort it by, um, you know, something like, uh, like loss. Um, and I guess, you know, with loss, uh, lower is better, right? So we probably want to sort um, ascending. Um, we can see, okay, like here are the top um, runs. And then we have these kind of automatic visualizations that people typically want. Um, and then um, here we're tracking all the GPU utilization, which this is kind of a funny one where, um, you know, most people actually not anywhere near close to 100% um, utilization of their GPUs, especially over time. So that's kind of an easy win. Uh, that we're able to log in the background that you can often um, kind of clean up. And then we have tons of different um, panels that we've built for different kinds of custom visualizations that um, folks want when they use um, weights and biases. I think a fun one um, is our uh, is our hyperparameter um, kind of multidimensional visualization um, panel, which I think we got the idea from uh, three blue, one brown. If you're a fan of of that show, but you know, lots of people right. use this. Yeah, yeah. Um, so it talks about you know, it's like often you're like sort of exploring this high dimensional space, right? And you want to look at, um, you know, uh, what the what the correlations are. Here, let me. I'll make one here for my um, my run here. Um, so we can add um, the different hyperparameters that we have, um, and uh, And then we can add maybe uh, like accuracy is probably what we really what we really care about here, um, or maybe actually uh, validation accuracy. Um, and so you can see here, um, you, you can actually look for um, you 
uh, you can actually look for um, patterns here. Like I could select, okay, here's the runs with the highest um, accuracy, uh, validation accuracy, and they all actually clearly have lower dropout, right? So no question that, um, you know, dropout's kind of not working um, for this uh, for this set of parameters. So, so like, it's kind of a beautiful visualization, but it's also a really quick way to get quick insights in a high, high dimensional space like we're often um, operating in. And we, we have tons of different panels. Another fun one um, that I'm proud of because I made this one is parameter importance where um, we build a um, a boosted model, boosted tree model on top of your hyperparameters um, with respect to some output, like here's accuracy, but we could do like loss. And then we look at the feature importance. So, you know, this data set of the runs I have highlighted, dropout two is the most important parameter, which is also very positively correlated uh, with loss, which is bad in this case, right? Because lower loss is better. So um, consistent with this graph below, uh, you really don't want your dropout two or dropout one to be very high. Um, so we built all these things to kind of help people kind of quickly understand um, the models that they're building. Um, and then, you know, like once once you're kind of doing that, then you typically go a lot further, right? So um, we have these tables where you can kind of explore your data. So, um, you know, for example, here, this is classification of um, iNaturalist data. It's like animals and plants. And you can go in and say, okay, we want to group by the guess that I'm making. So now we can actually see the individual images where the guess was fungi and the truth was amphibia, right? So these, I guess, are amphibians misclassified as, as fungus. And you kind of immediately see um, the data that fit that category. And then we'll also show you histograms of the scores um, that you're getting. So you can really go nuts with these um, with these analyses. And then when you start to put things more into production, you know, we've you end up with these kind of complicated lineages. I'm sure this is happening at Covariate and and other places, right? Where you have like, you know, often the input to your training data is the output of another um, run that you have that's really common. And then, you know, in the real world, you start to like actually want to go through and trace the lineage of, okay, this is some output or even some evalu evaluation script. You know, what did it run on? You know, what was upstream um, from that? And so we, we kind of let you explore um, the set of things that you tried where you actually can click on any of these runs and go and get kind of all the stuff that you've logged um, along the way. Um, and then um, we also have a model registry where um, you can keep track of what's kind of going in and out of production and make these nice model cards of, um, you know, exactly what you have running in your company in, in production right now. And I'll show you one more thing that I, I really love, which is these this reports feature. So you know, say I learned here that dropout two is um, highly negatively correlated um, with, with loss. I could create a report where I show how I got to this conclusion, right? So I can bring in these charts that I have in this media and these selections. Um, you know, and it's kind of like a mini a mini, mini, mini paper, right? That like a company would really need to just sort of know something that you learned, right? So, you know, dropout two seems to seems to be bad in general. <laughs> but, but then I'm sure you've had this experience, right? I have where, you know, you come to a conclusion and then someone else comes in and they question it, right? So, you know, if I save this report and save this, um, you know, this realization that I, I think I got to, um, and let me give it a title here, um, dropout. Um, analysis, <laughs> my detailed dropout analysis. Um, and by the way, I just have to tell you, you can also do, um, you can put in uh, uh, inline equations, right? So you could go go crazy with you <laughs> if you want to do some math. Uh, but, Write the whole paper. Um, like, Write the whole paper yeah, if you want to. You can even actually export it into, export the LaTeX into a PDF. Um, but now say I, I sent it to you and, and I don't know, you're my advisor, my boss, and you say, I don't know about that, Lucas. You know, he's 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 been running companies too much. He's not um, he's not in the weeds enough. She's got some bug in his code. You could actually then go through and look at exactly how I got to this conclusion, right? So all these graphs are feeding off of these runs, but actually I've logged all these runs with weights and biases. So you could go in and literally, um, you know, see exactly what happened here, down to the uh, you know the code and the um, loss scripts and all that. So um, all about kind of making you know, teams' lives easier as they try to build and deploy machine learning models. Lucas, this is beautiful. And I'm, I'm especially the, the thing that also kind of surprised, probably impressed me is you don't just have the stats in the graphs. You actually can find 
the mistakes the model is making and visualize them. The whole, the confusion matrix is not just like some, you know, temperature plot. It's actually a list of examples you get to look at that are getting confused between classification and so forth, which is, which is really cool. Awesome. Thanks so much. Yeah. Thanks for making the time. My pleasure.